In this video, we're going to address chemical bonding. The Nevada State Science Content Standard says that students know atoms bond with one another by transferring or sharing electrons. And one of the objectives that will be satisfied after this video is students will classify bonding types according to electronegativity differences. So first, a few definitions. What is a chemical bond? It's a mutual electrical attraction between the nuclei of one atom and the valence electrons of a different atom, and it causes them to attach to one another. And under the umbrella of chemical bonds, there are two types of bonding. There is ionic bonding. It's a type of chemical bonding that's caused by purely electrical attraction between cations, which are positively charged ions, and anions, negatively charged ions. Covalent bonding, the other type of bonding, is a chemical bonding caused by the sharing of electrons between different atoms. Sharing is caring. Covalent bonding. And to determine what type of bond you have, we can use an electronegativity chart, which is found in your textbook on page 161, and there are various electronegativity charts on the internet and other places. Generally, if there's a difference in electronegativity of 3.3 to 1.1, you're talking about an ionic bond. If it's less than 1.7 and down to 0.3, it's a polar covalent bond. And if it's less than 0.3 down to 0, it's a nonpolar covalent bond. And soon we'll discuss exactly what that means and how you determine these differences. Ionic bonds, there's a big difference in electronegativity. Examples include fluorine, which has the highest electronegative value of 4. And if it's bonded to potassium, which has an electronegative value of 0.8, you simply subtract find the difference, and it's 3.2. 3.2 falls well within the range of an ionic bond. And another example, oxygen being bonded to barium, values of 3.5 and 0.9, you end up with 2.6. No matter what you bond together, whichever element has the larger electronegative value, that's the one that you go first. The one that goes second in your equation is the one with the smaller electronegative value. So if ever you come up with a negative electronegative difference, you've switched the values. Switch them around so that the larger value goes first. Electronegative differences should never be negative. Okay, let's talk about types of covalent bonds. A nonpolar bond means that the electrons are shared equally and overall the bond results in a neutral, nonpolar covalent bond. In other words, there's really not much difference or much more pull that one atom has on the electrons of the other one. They, they pretty much share them equally. Uh, for example, if you have two elements that have the exact same electronegative value, such as nitrogen and nitrogen bonded together, both obviously having the same value of 3. You subtract those, you get 0. So it's an equal pull on the electrons. Aluminum and silicon have very close electronegative values, 1.8 and 1.5, for a difference of 0.3. Now, if you have a little bit larger difference in electronegativity, you end up with what's called a polar covalent bond. And polar means that electrons are attracted more towards one atom than toward the other, and the compound is not necessarily neutral, or it's polar, a polar covalent compound. Examples might include hydrogen and oxygen. Having values of 3.5 for oxygen and subtracting the 2.1 for the hydrogen's value, you end up with a difference of 1.4. And another example, hydrogen bonded with carbon, carbon's value of 2.5, hydrogen's value again being 2.1, a difference of 0.4. These are both examples of polar covalent. And now a little practice. What type of bond is formed between the following? We have germanium and arsenic. And if you look in your electronegativity chart, feel free to pause this video and take a little time and figure out what these values are. 
germanium and arsenic. Having a value of 2 and 1.8 gives you a difference of 0.2, therefore is a nonpolar covalent bond. Carbon and oxygen. Having values of 3.5 and 2.5 gives you a difference of 1. The difference of 1 falls within the value of a polar covalent bond. Fluorine and oxygen are next. Fluorine has a value of 4, again, the absolute highest. Oxygen, a value of 3.5, giving you a difference of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 falls within the value of polar covalent. And lastly, we have potassium and chlorine. Values of 3 and 0.8 for a difference of 2.2. 2.2 falls within the range for an ionic bond. Let's talk now more specifically about covalent bonding. A covalent bond is when two or more atoms are connected by the sharing of electrons in their outer layer, which is also known as its, the valence layer. The formation of a covalent bond will start with two atoms that are pretty far apart and they really have no forces acting on them to repel one another or to be attracted to one another. So we have like and opposite charges act as forces to repel and attract. Those would be protons with a positive charge and electrons with a negative charge. Greater distance at this point, there is no attraction. But as these two atoms get closer, an attraction between the proton on one atom and an electron on another atom begins. And that could be seen the other way as well. The proton on one atom attracted to the electron on another. If they get still closer, it'll reach a certain point where the repulsion of protons from one atom and the protons from another atom, same charges repel, and also the repulsion of electrons on one atom and electrons on the other atom, both negative, those repelling forces are going to balance with the attracting forces that we mentioned above here with the proton-electron attraction. And that will pretty much determine the bond length. Now, if these were pushed closer, the repelling forces of same charges from one atom to the other are going to overpower the attractive forces of the opposite charges and it would push them back apart until we would reach a stable bond length where the forces are balanced. Characteristics of a covalent bond. Electrons used to bond are equally shared. They don't necessarily belong more to one atom than they do to another. And this being the case, that means that the orbitals are going to overlap between those atoms. The distance, or the bond length between the two nuclei, is going to depend upon the number of electrons shared and the elements that are bonded. It is possible for atoms to share more than one electron. Generally, the more electrons shared shortens and strengthens a bond. And being bonded to multiple atoms or elements can also affect bond strength, bond energy, and bond length. Electrons that are shared by atoms tend to be such that they form a noble gas configuration. And noble gases don't really want to bond with anything because they're content with what's in their outer valence layer. They're very stable. They have in their outer layer what's called an octet. And the octet rule says that chemical compounds tend to form so that each atom, by gaining, losing, or sharing electrons, will have an octet of electrons in its highest occupied energy level, or its valence electrons. And that's usually going to be eight. And there are exceptions to this. 
generally in at this level of chemistry we're not going to deal a lot with those exceptions but just so that you know that some of them exist hydrogen though it is a noble gas will bond to achieve two electrons to match the noble gas nearest it helium boron is a bit of an oddball it bonds to achieve six electrons rather than eight and there are some elements that tend to have more than eight electrons. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.